Real lovers, real lovers, what is going on? It's your man Jay Emanuel, baby. And today we are going to be diving into a topic that is a good one. We're talking about spiritualizing dating and why I honestly believe it is keeping Christian women single. So I want to know your thoughts, man. Before we get into this video and dive into what me and the ladies have to say about this topic, I want to hear from you. Let me know. Do you feel like Christian women tend to spiritualize or even over spiritualize dating? Leave a comment. Let me know. But without further ado, y'all, let's get into this video and see what the ladies had to say about the topic of spiritualizing dating, y'all. It's about to get good. I'm excited, y'all. Let's get into it. All right. So let me go ahead and hit this little play button. Spiritualizing dating is keeping Christian women single. Oh, yeah. This is the one, y'all. So before we get into this, I think we have... Yo, you hear, you hear Tatiana already? She's like, Lordy, where are we going with this one? Yeah, honey, it's about to get deep. <laughs> to lay some groundwork with regards to what does it mean to spiritualize dating? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to chime in and share how you define that? Now, let me pause right here. So this is an important thing to do. Whenever you're having a conversation, especially where it's a topic where people are either hard on one side or the other, you always want to lay the groundwork. You want to lay that foundation of defining the term. So that's one of the reasons why before we even dive into spiritualizing dating, whether or not it's something that Christian women are doing, whether or not it's keeping them single, you always want to make sure that we have an understanding of the terms. And in this case, what does it mean to spiritualize or quote unquote over spiritualize dating? So just keep that in mind. If you're ever in having a conversation with somebody, always lay that groundwork first. That's the first thing you want to do, ladies. But in our case, I don't want to make the assumption that you, me, her, all of the other women, they all have this one definition for spiritualizing dating. Because one thing that I've learned is that most people have different definitions for things. So I wanted to start things off by making sure I know how each of the ladies on the panel, Tatiana, Krista, and Natalie are defining spiritualizing so that when we have this conversation, we can all be on the same page and so can the viewers. So let's get back into it, y'all. Let's see how they're going to define spiritualizing dating. When I think about that, like um, over spiritualizing or spiritualizing um, dating is this idea that might be to the extreme of what the word may say about engaging with the opposite sex or um, going off of these religious legalistic rules that may not apply to your situation in dating. Sometimes churches make up their own rules that have nothing to do with what the word says. Mm -hmm. That right there. Yeah, y'all already saw my girl Crystal was about to give you that. Because mm -hmm, that's real talk right there. Let's talk about this for a second. When you hear of people, churches, organizations saying that they are giving you rules for dating that are coming from the Bible. We have to understand what's happening here. The first thing that we have to understand is that it's based on their personal interpretation of the scriptures, of the Bible, of that verse, of that word, however they want to describe it. And this is the thing, when you're talking about interpretations, that's a doctrine. That is what doctrines are. Even if it's pertaining to dating, it's still a doctrine because somebody read the word and now they're making their own interpretation of what it says and now telling you how you should apply it in your life, how you should interpret it as well. And for the case of what we're talking about, how it applies to dating. Let, let's just get one thing clear. When we talk about dating in the Bible, anybody who is looking at things from a biblical perspective knows that the Bible does not talk about dating at all. Now, I will be the first one to concede that there are biblical principles that you can extract from the word and then apply that to dating and other practical things that we are experiencing in our society today. But you cannot go to the Bible and say, this is what the Bible says. This is a hard and fast rule about dating because that's not what the book was written for. That's why what any of the text is related to. Dating probably wasn't even a cultural concept in that time. So beware. Christian ladies, if somebody or some church or some organization is trying to give you biblical rules for dating, there's no such thing. There may be some biblical principles that they are trying to share with you that you can utilize while dating. But let's get it clear. There's no quote unquote dating rules that are biblical. They may align with biblical principles, but the rules, some man, some woman, some organization, some church 
they came up with those rules. And it's up to you as a free thinking individual to determine whether or not those are rules that you want to apply to yourself. But that needs to be stated. There are no biblical dating rules. Whether you agree or disagree, get in the comments and let me know what your take is on biblical rules, doctrine, and the like. But let's see what my girl Tatiana got to say. Um, we also have the remnants of the purity culture movement and how it kind of warped people's minds regarding sex and engaging with the opposite sex because there was that book that was out, I like, Kiss Dating Goodbye, right? Like it's so that there's all these different um, these different theories and things that people are saying, but we're not, we're making it like it has to be the super crack the sky and Jesus coming down on the cloud and literally telling you in your face that this person right here is your husband or your wife. Yo, let me pause right now. Yo, Tatiana, she be getting in the jabs. I'll be, I'll be liking it. Yo, she be coming with the, the jabs. You do it subtle though. Yes. There's no crack the sky moment. Jesus ain't coming down. He's not going to tell you not just what to do when it comes to dating, but like Tatiana said, Jesus, God, however you look at it, he's not going to tell you who to marry, who to date. We got to stop with all of this. There are people that are pushing this narrative that God is going to reveal who your husband or your wife is. Now, I know everybody's journey is different. But let's just be honest and say that that doesn't apply for the majority of people. If we are talking about people who have gotten that word, they are definitely the outliers. Can we agree? I, I hope so. Maybe not. If not, get in the comments. Let me know. Definitely hit the like button if you're enjoying it so far. But let's get back in and see what the ladies have to say. Spiritualizing yeah. to that end where it's like they can't literally make a move without hearing from God. When he lays out. Yeah, y'all see how she did that without hearing. Yo, yo, she keeping it a bean. Yo, hearing from God when it comes to who to date, yo, that those are some some treacherous, tricky waters right there. And for all of my Christian ladies who are tuned in watching right now, I would say be cautious. Be cautious moving like that. It's nothing wrong with leading your life and even operating within the dating space based on biblical principles. But man, when you are relying on hearing a voice or hearing God direct you in what to do when it comes to dating or who you should marry or get in a relationship with, you are really handcuffing yourself because the likelihood of that happening is very, very slim. Let me know what y'all think, bro lovers. Get in the comments. Y'all know what to do, but let's get back into this. Now, a lot of the stuff that we are supposed to be doing in his word already. There's plenty of stuff in there that says, I already gave you this instruction, so I just need you to live it out. And so to yeah. me, going off that, I think I feel like there's a layer of fear there that people need to uncover and be, just be honest. Like, yeah, Lord, I'm actually fearful, so I'm going to hold on to all this legal legalese and all this religious jargon so I can protect myself from getting hurt. But relationships are a risk, and we're going to get into that in, the, in a little bit, but I want the other ladies to chime in on this. And I'm going to stop it right there because what Tatiana just said is pivotal. If you're afraid to date, if you're afraid of choosing the wrong person, if you're afraid of marrying the wrong person, be honest. Just be honest. Acknowledge that it's a fear, but don't try to frame or control the way other people navigate dating and relationships and marriage based on your own personal fear. If you have a fear, you have to work towards overcoming it. And don't allow yourself to get trapped in following doctrine, following other people's opinions that will lead you astray. And honestly, they will get you really, really confused when it comes to how to navigate the dating scene. So I'm glad my girl Tatiana shared that because if it's fear that's really at the root of why you're navigating and waiting to hear some voice from the sky or why you are like, yo, I got to follow these rules that come directly from the Bible. Even though, like we talked about previously, they're not really coming from the Bible because there are no biblical dating rules. I stand on that. I really do firmly. Like I said, biblical principles exist that you can apply to dating, but there is no dating rules that are in the Bible. So keep that in mind. Let's see what the other ladies got to say, y'all. Good stuff. Appreciate you for sharing that, Tatiana. Yeah. Natalie, how do you define spiritualizing dating? Well... <laughs> I agree with everything that Tatiana shared. I kind of think that, yeah, it's basically what you said. I think that sometimes as believers, we can create this super spiritual idea of what it means when we'll meet the one. And I think in the moments where I have true. struggled with this and 
I'm a work in progress still. I think sometimes it's creating this idea that there's this one person and God's going to show you exactly who that person is before you meet that person so that everything is smooth sailing. And it's kind of trying to avoid the risk. Like God mm -hmm. will give me a digital download or a heavenly download about this person. And then I will gracefully step into it all the way to the altar. <laughs> Now, nah, right there, Natalie just dropped gems. And what she just said ties perfectly in what Tatiana said. And once again, it's fear that a lot of people are operating in. A lot of people are afraid to date. They're afraid of relationships. They're afraid of choosing and picking the wrong person. And I'll be honest, they just won't be 100 and say, hey, I'm afraid. I'm scared. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if you're the right person for me to move and operate with. Or if we can be real, they're just not equipped to date from a perspective of wisdom, right? Like, like they know they want to date. They know they want companionship. They want a partner, but they haven't done the work necessary to figure out how to properly navigate the dating scene, how to properly navigate within relationships. And that's one of those things where people can rely too much on spiritualizing the process of dating. And for the purpose of this video, we're talking about Christian women in particular. So if you're not a Christian woman, if it doesn't apply to you, I'm not talking to you, but for my Christian ladies, as Natalie even said, and I appreciate her transparency on that, is that if you know this is something that you've been prone to do over here at Right to Real Love, we are about being honest with ourselves. Get to the point where you can say, you know what, I've done that. Maybe there's a different way that I should try to approach it. And that's what we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of this video. But let's hear what my girl Krista has to say about spiritualizing data. That's good. Krista, what's your take? How do you define spiritualizing dating? I think, I mean, I, I agree with like everything that they've said so far, but I also think it's like obsessing over this soulmate conversation. Mm. I think that's Look at my girl, Krista, coming out the gate. She coming out the gate with that boom. You know what I'm saying? She got the banger ready already coming at him aiming for the head like she not playing she not playing you know tatiana kind of eased into it natalie you know gave him a little uh-uh but man krista just locked loaded put one in the chamber and went straight for the headshot because let's be real this concept of soulmates the one oh my goodness that is it's tripping so many of y'all up let's let's be honest so many of y'all are being tripped up because you're searching and looking for the one. You're looking for your soulmate. And a, a part of me wants to say there's nothing wrong with that, but yo, that's not in your best interest. I'm gonna just say it. Agree or disagree, either way, I gotta say it. When you are focused on trying to find the one or a soulmate, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage because every person that you meet, you're approaching them with the sole purpose of crossing them off the list not trying to get to know them you're literally approaching people and like uh okay are, are you the one nope are, are, are you my soulmate nope and you're crossing people off the list but this is the kicker this is the kicker i was reading the book and it helped me to see this so much more clearly and, and got me to rethink my perspective on soulmates and the one what the book said is we're holding people to this standard of the one trying to figure out if they match up but we don't even know who the one is it's not like you know who the one is, you know what they look like, you know who they are. And when you meet somebody, you can clearly identify that. No, you not him, you not her. But you don't even know who this future the one is. You don't even know who this future soulmate is. So how in the world are we meeting people and saying, nope, you not the one, you not the one. How do we know? We haven't even taken the time to get to know them. Now, I'm clearly not advocating that you need to give everybody the time to try to figure out whether or not they're the quote unquote one. But what I am saying is that if all you're focusing on is trying to find your soulmate or trying to find the one, you're operating backwards because you're actually operating from a place of mystery. You don't know who the one is. So how can you say that people are not the one? You don't even know who they are. That's just, that's just my two cents. Let me know what y'all think about soulmates, the one. I got a few other videos. We're going to talk about that even deeper. But, you know, I just want to plant that seed. And let's hear what my girl Krista got to say, though. <laughs> as recently, like, that is dangerous. Like, regardless if you believe you have a yes. soulmate or not, like, obsessing over it. And, like, also, don't do that. literally, people think that they're going to have a soulmate coming. And then they don't do anything. Like, because they, they're...
that right there, they think they have a soulmate coming. Like I just said, that they don't know who that is. It's not like they'll see them and they'll know. They don't know who it is. And then what do they do? They just sit and wait. They just sit and wait. What is waiting going to get you? Not much, not much in life. So why would we think it would be any different in dating and relationships? If just sitting around doing nothing gets you very little in life, why would you have great expectations of meeting the one by sitting back and doing nothing? It don't make no sense, y'all. It doesn't. Let me know what your take is. Are you an advocate or a believer in the one? And if so, what's your perspective on it? I would love to hear it. I know that I ain't got all the answers and I definitely just want to share with the ladies out there that if you do believe in the soulmate or the one, it's not necessarily wrong. I just want you to see, as Krista mentioned, the dangers of doing so. And on top of that, how it can actually be hindering you from going out and meeting great people having great experiences and learning and growing along the way he's gonna come he's gonna set me right as i am i think that's super dangerous yeah. but also i feel like spiritualizing dating also means that like oh he tried to kiss me oh my god god would never send a man like that you know or <laughs> yo y'all y'all see it yo when tatiana get up in the camera like that y'all already know what time it is y'all already know what time it is krista just dropped a gem too many women, too many women are checking brothers off of the list all because he wanted a kiss, all because he tried to hug her, all because he tried to touch her. Just because a man is interested and attracted to a woman sexually, it doesn't mean that you got to cut the brother off. It doesn't mean that. Christian ladies, stop cutting men off because they are attracted to you sexually. It's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Now, that's not to say that the brother doesn't need to learn how to have discipline and control himself in your presence. But man, expecting the brother to not want to hug you, not want to touch you, not want to kiss you. Why would you want to be with a person like that? I'm just being honest. I don't want to be with a woman who has no interest in wanting to hug me, touch me or kiss me. I don't. And ladies, if that's the type of man you want, yo, that's you. But I would just say, if they ain't trying to do all that, if they don't like you like that, they're not sexually attracted to you. And I don't know how many sparks you expect to fly in that type of relationship, but that's just my two cents. Chris, you know what I mean? Come in here. Little, <laughs> like little, little things like that where you 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 don't let a, a person be human. You, you, you mm. think that they... That right there, yo, that's the caveat. And I'm so glad Krista pointed that out. He's being human. He's not being a scumbag. He's not being a jerk. He's not being overly sexual. He's not being a predator. He's being human. He's attracted to you, an attractive woman, sexually attracted to you. He wants to touch you. He wants to hold you. He wants to hug you. He wants to kiss you. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean that he gets to hug you, hold you, touch you and kiss you whenever he wants. That's not what we're saying. But you got to stop crossing brothers off the list and saying, oh, there's something wrong with him because of the fact that he's sexually attracted to you and has a desire to kiss you. It's human. It's human. And honestly, ladies, can you really say that you don't want to do that too if you're really attracted to him? You saying you don't want to touch? You don't want to hug? You don't want to kiss? Like Tatiana, I'm going to get closer and I'm going to ask you, are you sure? I don't know. You let me know. <laughs> exactly as you think in your mind or as you feel like God has yep. told you, which is so dangerous. And that yeah. is something that I've had to like unwire in my head, like having male and female friends. I think I used to think that that was really, really bad. But mm. then I'm like, and then I got to a point where I'm like, I look, you don't know how to operate with the opposite sex. Like I'm literally that right there, that level of honesty, ladies, that level of honesty is what we need. Where Chris was like, yo, I just gotta be honest with myself. I don't even know how to operate like this. When you are that honest with yourself, that opens the door for you being able to learn and grow. That's what we here for. Cause I feel like the church made me think that I'm supposed to talk to them. Unless See? it's my husband. So like, See? I don't- How does that sound? A woman not able to talk to any man except her husband. Those are those doctrinal rules that you ain't going to find nowhere in the Bible. And if it's not in the Bible, you got to ask yourself, who made that up? And why am I applying this rule to my life? That's a great question to ask. Ladies, don't skip on that one.
don't know. Like there's, it's just dangerous. It's very dangerous, but it's hard to navigate. And I don't really know if there's like a right way to do it, which is what's so mm -hmm. hard. Cause some yeah. of these spiritualizing ways that we say are wrong, there's people who have had success with it. So that's what's so difficult. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's fair. Those that's are great fair. points, ladies. What are your um, thoughts, Jay? Great definition. So to me, I think it's real simple. When I think about somebody <laughs> spiritualizing dating, I think that they're either ignoring or diminishing three very, very important things. Reality, logic, and practicality. That right there. That right there. If you didn't catch that, rewind the tape or just keep listening because I'm going to say it again. Reality, logic, practicality. Those three things are necessary in life as well as dating man let's see what more i gotta say on this mm -hmm. i think that they are totally mm -hmm. dismissing the fact that you have to stay in reality when you're talking about dating you, you have do. to understand mm -hmm. that the real world things must be logical you have to approach dating logically you have to recognize the fact that there's a practical approach to what dating is you can try to spiritualize it but then you're just bringing a new element into something that already exists without the spiritual element. I think you can be a spiritual person engaging in dating, but the minute you try to turn dating into something spiritual is where the spiritualizing of dating happens because dating is something that is, yo, I don't know if I'll peep that during the show, but yo, Tatiana hit me with that fascinating. Yes, yo, like, listen, I think we have to understand that there is a difference between the spiritual and the physical world. Dating is a physical experience. That's not to say that spiritual individuals are not involved with it. If you're a spiritual individual, there's a spiritual element to it. But the process of dating itself is not one that is spiritual. It's one that is happening within this physical world that we're operating in. That's the reason why we got to keep things in reality, the real world. And if we're talking about the real world, that means logic should apply. Right. That means practicality should apply. That's not to say that you don't take the things that you've learned along your spiritual journey and you utilize them in the form of wisdom as you make your way through this real world, utilizing logic and utilizing practicality. But at the end of the day, you cannot approach dating like it in and of itself is something spiritual. In my personal and humble opinion, I don't believe it is. If you disagree, if you agree, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you're enjoying this, man. Yo, this thing is good. It's heating up, baby. We ain't done, but I just wanted to point out. I, I, I ain't catch that at first. Tatiana, like, fascinating. <laughs> it's something that is logic-based, and it's something that's practical. I totally understand that some people kind of take that to an extreme, and I think that that's where you get the whole spiritualizing piece coming into fruition. So wow. that's my take on it. Stuff, I think some people can spiritualize life. Like you get saved. Ooh, ooh, look at did, yo, yo. Crystal was headshotting earlier, boy. Now she dropping those bees. Yes, so many people not only spiritualize dating, but they spiritualize life in general. Yo, drop those gems, Crystal. Drop them. Like, oh my gosh. No, no. You know, I don't That's know. Like, did, what, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, I woke up late. Spiritual? Yeah, they super deep. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some great I My man's talking all over you, though, Krista. You was dropping the gym. Yeah. I just I'm totally I mean, messed it up. It, it's fair. I think a lot of people, especially when I would say this isn't everybody's story, but most people, when they first accept a new religion or a new type of spirituality, they're usually on fire. They're they're yeah. zealous, as we can say. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think if you start to mature, you'll start to realize that, oh, I think I might be doing a little too much. I think there's a way That's for a me point. to be a spiritual yes. minded person, for me to prioritize my relationship with God. I'm going to use this word for lack of any other word at the, that's coming to my mind at the moment. But once again, it's like balance, right? Like too much of anything can become a not good thing, right? Or I should have just said it right. Too much of anything can become a bad thing, right? Let's just put it like that. And it's the same thing. There's nothing wrong with somebody coming into a new spiritual understanding, a new religious experience and being zealous. I think that most people, that's their, that's been their experience. Not everybody, but a lot of people um, have become overzealous when they come into a new type of spiritual or religious understanding. And after a while, as you begin to mature, that should start to like level out where you are knowing and discerning 
when you should approach and share the things that you have on your heart to share with people and knowing when to just fall back, relax and allow people to progress through life as they're progressing. But no, I just wanted to point that out. Balance is key. Balance is key in every part of life. But not be extra about it. Like, I think I can yeah. still move yeah, in the yes. world practically without just, you know, just taking people by storm. Like, like when you step in yes. the building and people are like, whoa, what just happened? Like, it's just like, oh, man, you, you might be a stepping in the building like the Tasmanian devil. Like, yo, you just knocking everything over in your presence, man. Yo, you know, some people bring that type of energy and it's nothing wrong with people being spiritually minded and on fire. But man, make sure y'all ready, man. Yo, sometimes they hop in the building with no warning and you like, man, I ain't know it was about to get this hot in here. I ain't know it was about to turn up here. I ain't know I was gonna have to be watching out because you come and you spinning around like the Tasmanian devil. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm definitely not implying that the person is a devil, but y'all know, y'all know he was, he was, he was a wild little thing, man. And some people are overly zealous to that degree. And I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying you got to be mindful of the environments that you move in and you operate in. Utilize wisdom. And it's not that what you believe is too much. It's right. just your approach. Yes, come on. It's the yeah. practice of it. Yeah. So here goes some that was it right that, there. That right there. Yes. Oh, no, say that again? No, no I just so said that Daniel? was it. Mike drop. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So Daniel says, struggle love has become the norm in some relationships. And some mm -hmm. people think they have to stay until they change. Someone violating your trust Ooh. is a big price to pay for not wanting to be alone. I agree. Mm -hmm. oh, I agree. That is, yeah, y'all count the cost. Yes. Oh. Say that again, Taziana. Count the cost. That is something that I try to reiterate. Ladies and gentlemen who may be tuning in. Everything in life, we should be weighing and counting the cost before we take action. That doesn't mean that we utilize that as an excuse or a reason not to take action, but we should do some type of analysis as to what is it going to cost me if I move forward in this direction. Relationships and dating is no different. Ladies, count the cost before you move forward in these situations that could cost you a lot in the long run. The other Danielle says, men spiritualizing dating has kept her single because really? men are obsessed yes. with leading somebody somewhere. Yo, yo, look at Tatiana. She had to put the hands on her head and everything. All of the ladies, yo, like Natalie got her cup. Yo, Crystal like, uh-huh. And that's real. That's real. It's important. Even though I'm talking to the ladies, men out here, Christian men in particular, are also overly spiritualizing dating. And like she mentioned, Danielle, shout out to you. You know, that leadership thing has just been people i get it leadership is important but i think that's one of those things that have been overly emphasized especially when it comes to to men i, I think some men don't really understand what is required of you as a leader and one are you even leading yourself are you and you wanting to lead a woman i don't know just something to ponder but uh yeah let's get back to it and lives on his friend's couch. That's facts. Come on, Danielle. <laughs> I feel you. Right. That's right. a problem. So Every right? man want to lead, and you ain't yeah. got nothing to be following. Like, yeah. <laughs> when we and on top of that, look at Natalie. Like, yeah, Natalie got that laugh. She's when, like, yep. Christian women, they sometimes spiritualize like the whole sex piece, and with Christian men, there's a, a spiritualizing of this leadership thing. And, it, and it, that's it. If I had to boil it down, I stand on what I just said in that. I think that Christian women tend to over spiritualize the sexual piece of relationships. And then you got Christian men that are over spiritualizing that leadership piece. We need balance in both of those areas for sure. And sex are two things that uh, they, they operate outside the realms of your religion. So it's just like, yo, you don't have to add to it. Like, I mean, leadership is leadership and sex is sex how you operate in those two spheres as a spiritually minded person or as a Christian or as a believer, that's that's what's unique to your own journey. But it's when people try to reshape the definitions of what leadership is and what sex is, that's where you get all of this clouded confusion and what I, I think is what we're talking about mm -hmm. tonight is the spiritualizing of these matters. Oh, yeah, that's good. I definitely yes. agree. Like, you get a lot of yes. men, Christian men in particular, who try to spiritualize leadership. Like, yo, either you're a leader or you're not. Yes. 
Right. And to that point, Jay, mm, come like on. Sometimes, okay. It's like sometimes people grab. Yo, Krista is a whole vibe, man. Yo, shout out, shout out to you, Krista. You are a whole vibe. I love it. I love it, man. Yo, gangway time. You come back on, man. Yo, you are a whole vibe. I love it. And yeah, we're going to get into what my girl Tatiana said. In the meantime, yo, hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want more of this great content. And definitely get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on spiritualizing dating and the many other things that we've talked about thus far in this video. But they don't read the rest of it. Facts. You know, sometimes there are whole denominations based off of in a, a maybe a wrong interpretation of the mm -hmm. word. And mm -hmm. sometimes that happens in relationships Doctor, too. I like was telling you about that earlier. Some guys will argue about women submitting to men what when the Bible talks about both partners submitting to each other as right. unto the Lord. So mm -hmm. it's like, why are we ignoring this part? Why are we looking at one part and not the rest of it? How can you leave me if you're not even looking at the whole text, sir? <laughs> Facts. Make it and make Krista, sense you, for you me. know, you know, we always oh my gosh. context, right? <laughs> yeah, you you already know, and I'm not yeah, even yeah, yeah, Krista know how much <laughs> I talk about context. It, it's huge. Context. So that's good. Said, that's like um God will give you desires of your heart. I, whatever is said before that, it's like y'all need to read the beginning. I think it's something. Like oh, there, there go Tatiana again. Yo, she she getting ready to hop in the camera. You already, yo, when you see Tatiana posture up, get close to that camera, something is about to happen, and usually some gems are about. To be dropped. <laughs> Submit God. yourself to God. Look at yeah. you. People too. always do the second part, and it's like, now wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Listen, God's promises have something attached to it. You got to yes. be obedient, man. A lot of it is obedience. Yes. That's real. And that right there is going to be the end of that clip. I hope you guys enjoyed it talking about spiritualizing dating. Oh my goodness. So much goodness dropped in that clip. I want to know your thoughts on spiritualizing dating. Some of the things that we said, do you agree, disagree? Let us know your thoughts. Do Christian women over spiritualize dating? Do you think it's keeping them single? I want to hear from you. Drop us a comment. Let us know. But that's all for this video. We'll be back in the next one. Until then, stay blessed, y'all.